half of all men suffer hair loss by the age of 50. Yes, and the other half uh, before 50, but <laughs> only joking. Uh, there's, there's no need to worry, though, because we have Dr. Patrick Tracy here. Pat, tell us first of all about MPHL. I suppose that stands for male pattern hair loss. Yes. And male pattern hair loss is a condition that is both predictable and progressive. And it is known medically as androgenetic alopecia. And up to 95% of all types of alopecia in males is actually androgenetic alopecia. And male why, why do men seem to lose their hair earlier than women? That's a very good question. Um, it all has to do with a certain hormone okay. called dihydroxytestosterone. And in certain parts of our scalp, is susceptible to this circulating hormone in both males and females. It is also the cause, testosterone, of um, female hair loss, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And um, up to 30% of 25-year-olds can have this, and up to 50%, as you mm -hmm. said earlier, of 50-year-olds. See, yeah. the thing about it years ago, we, we, were all to we were always told, if your mother's father was bald, you're going yes. to be bald as well. Is, is that true, true though? We did think that until recently. Yeah. We now know it comes from both sides. Okay. Oh, I see. So there it's not on the maternal side. genetic alleles involved, and one of them is paternal now. But up to 71% of it is on the female side, mm -hmm. but we did think it was always on the female side. Okay. That's right. Well, I suppose looking at the news, and, and there is a lot you can do these days, and you see certain stars. So yes. say, say someone like James Nesbitt, for example, sure. who's come out, and we have a photo of him right here, and you can see okay. bef the before and after. Now, James yes. Nesbitt was we spoke very openly he had a hair transplant you're going to tell us about that but he said that he was totally obsessed with his hair loss and it got really really problematic for him to live with it yes there's no doubt about it Maura that it affects different people in different ways and um, a lot of males it doesn't affect at all they mm -hmm. can just um, cut their hair short it has become the fashion and there's others who um, it affects very deeply psychologically it's interesting that you're going to show James and um, I know also you're going to show Wayne Rooney mm -hmm. yeah. and there is a thing in um, hair transplant now called the Wayne Rooney effect that people are coming in as a consequence. The interesting thing about the two celebrities you mentioned is that they both have two different types. Okay, we'll show Wayne Rooney just yes. while you're speaking about him there actually. We have the photo of Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Now this is unbelievable. Isn't mm -hmm. it amazing he what happened? Yeah. He was fairly well bald then. Yeah. He was. Well, Wayne had a method called FUV, which is what a lot of people favor now to an extent. Now there's two different methods, FUV and strip surgery, and they're very dependent on who's doing them really. You can have people who are brilliant at doing both of them. The advantage of FUE that everybody likes is the fact that you don't need any surgery, the follicles are taking and transmigrated from the back of the head to the front follicle by follicle. It's a sort of a slower process. Mm -hmm. It can take up to maybe six hours is to do 4,000. Is, is it painful, Patrick? No, it's no. done under a local anesthetic. Okay. Oh. Whereas the strip surgery, um, the strip is taken out and then sections of hair are taken up almost like a unit mm -hmm. that has little sweat glands, blood vessels, different things. But the fact that sort of you can um, move it up follicle by follicle makes it so simple now. Mm -hmm. And the big advantage also of the FUE method, of course, is the fact that an 18 year old can get it done. And when he's starting to just thin at the front, yeah. then again, he can come back and get some um, at the back of their head maybe when they're 28. I had some done myself by that yeah. method. Did at you? About, yeah. yeah, at about four or 500 yeah. hairs and um, they grow fine. Yeah. They take well about I'll tell you something now, Patrick, and a, a shot yes. they often show on this um, show is, not that one, the one behind, please. <laughs> that one, do you see? And you see I'll actually the, the pointer part. you see that shine there? Oh, yes. have, yeah. how, how, how long would it take now just to correct that? If you want to do that on your own, you'd probably get away with about four or 500 follicles. Okay. So it'd take about two hours to take them out, maybe two hours to put them in. Uh, maybe a little less than that. Yeah. And, and what about then, just while I have you here now, Patrick, I suppose, and uh, I'm this kind of... This is a fair role for you today. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, go I'm going back well, to a small it, bit it, as well. It's very good. You're about a grade three, possibly, so we can e easily sort of grade people up to grade eight, yeah. and as a consequence, you know many hairs they need. So you probably need 400 on either side there as well. Okay. You can actually and gauge that. So, f so if you had the hairs Absolutely. done there, and would yeah. that be it's just a one-off? The most important thing, more, believe it or not, is the back of your head, rather than mm -hmm. where the hair is lost. Okay. So, so where your donor site is, and oh as a consequence, whether you have enough sort of hair there to allow us to take some out so that it doesn't look like you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a very good yeah, way of yeah, putting it. Yeah. So you're transplanting the follicles literally to, to the part we that needs it. We normally have 120 per square centimetre. Mm -hmm. We can sort of bring it down to 80 
and you wouldn't notice it. But if you're at 80 and you bring it down to 40, 40 it looks like you're yeah. sort of falling there. So a lot of people, unfortunately, are turned on because there isn't enough uh, here to oh, yeah. take so, it. So, so they can it. actually do it. Well, like, un like this doesn't affect my performance at work now, but so <laughs> for, for somebody like Wayne Rooney, like when he got yes. his hair back, it, it seemed, his confidence seemed to Absolutely. come back as well, didn't it? Yes, indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he went straight onto Twitter and said, this is my hair transparent, and he started making jokes about, can you recommend any hair gel, you know, yeah. which I thought was... I suppose he started before, the, before everyone else started. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was right to be straight up, wasn't it? You have it? to be, yeah. there's no point yeah. of lying, you know. Absolutely, and um, Wayne has been very good for the industry because a lot of people that were sort of sitting, you know, sort of on the precipice of whether to um, get it done or not certainly have to come in. I suppose hair transplantation has become medical over the years. It started off almost from wigs to, mm -hmm. I suppose, doll's head effect and yeah. now as it's... But I suppose like women, I mean, we get, women get extensions, which mm -hmm. are just real mm -hmm. hair bonded into your own hair. But you know when people come in to you, when men come in to you, do they kind of like, I go to a hair salon and I might say, I love this, I love that kind of hairstyle like Alexa Chung. Do people come in you're, and say, I want to wear in real you're, you're really on the ball there, Mara. What we're doing is empowering um, the hair salons in, in Dublin, some on yeah. Grafton Street, for instance, to come in as part of the program. So they're almost like trichologists. So they design the hair. And the one big advantage of FUE is the fact that if you're doing it follicle by follicle, then you can also design it. You're not putting them in a strip together. So as a consequence, you can point them in a certain direction. If a patient's hair is going over to the left, then you can point them in that direction also. And they can sit down with their sort of um, hairdresser mm -hmm. and sort of say, this is the design I want. And it's great because also the hairdresser can watch it grow over the next six to yeah. 10 months. Do you, you only know? need once? Is it just once and you're done? Well, you're going to be losing hair at the same rate as you're putting it in. Okay. Okay. So sometimes you have to add in some maybe oral prescriptive medicine like finasteride mm -hmm. to sort of help in that. We normally don't. We normally take the people off sort of their medication and um, you transplant it in a certain way that you get a visual effect, often at the front, and um, because nobody's going to be looking down helicopter view. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and then probably in five years' time, you may need some yeah. more put in. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, it's amazing. How much does it cost then? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Say, say, say for something like this, no, I'll, I'll use myself as an example here. Okay. Okay. Great guinea because today. of the recession, <laughs> certainly prices have dropped back yeah. dramatically. It was in 2007 five euros per follicle, but it's back now to three. Okay, okay. so you can yeah. work, the, work out the math, as the Americans yeah, would say. Yeah, exactly. What about non surgical? We just touch on that very quickly. Are there okay. non surgical sure. areas um, you can go to? Uh, we can use other topical products like Rogaine, and that in some ways balances growth hormones in order to make the hair thicker and stop it shedding mm -hmm. itself. And of course, there's finasteride, which is a tablet. It's known in America as Propecia. It's one milligram. We don't have it in Ireland, but we do have Proscar for prostatic cancer. Okay. So what we normally do is take the tablet and break it down into a quarter or... Now, this is a wonderful tablet. Up to 95% of people, it'll stop their hair falling out and make it return. And up to 65% of people can grow their hair almost fully back within a sort of three or four year period. Oh, good. There are some potential side effects. It blocks the hormone we were talking about earlier, dihydroxytestosterone. And um, in its one milligram form, the side effects are only 1.4%. Mm -hmm. And there'd be both erection and ejaculation. And in very extremely small rare cases, that can be permanent side effects. So as a consequence, normally, it should be clinics that know what they're dealing with to sort of prescribe of the course. medicine rather than sort of mm -hmm. GPs. And of course, that tablet Proscar in five times the dose, those side effects are as high as 40%. Like everything else there yeah, is yeah, sides. Yeah. But yep. if you want the full Wayne Rooney, you have to go for the surgery. Thank you very much, Patrick. You're now, very Patrick, welcome. you're going to be back with us next month and we're going to talk about a massive issue, a lot more than, than a lot of women maybe want to speak about in public, oh, female oh, hair loss. Oh, absolutely. And female hair loss, um, often affects women more so than sort of yeah. male hair loss yeah. affects men. And there are many causes for it. We'll go through, you know, obviously postmenopausal, hormones again, thyroid issues. Women, obviously, because they're menstruating, that can lose iron, and that's one mm. of the big causes as well. But certainly, female hair loss is a big yeah, subject. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Uh, for all yeah. your information, or for all the information that we spoke about today, you can take a look at aylesburyhairclinic.com. And if you have any questions for Patrick, because he will be back with us in a month, do get them into us and we'll put them to okay. Patrick next welcome. time. Thank, Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Now are you concerned?